Honourable Member from Leduc Beaumont standing. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to rise today for the very first time as I address the Assembly. I am humbled by the support of the constituents of Luke Duke Beaumont, and it's an honour to be here representing them today. It's not lost on me the expectation of my constituents to see the economy grow, to see job opportunities increase, and to have more stability in every sector of our economy. As I travelled across my constituency, I talked to many hard-working Albertans, and I was saddened to hear from so many who had lost their jobs, had sporadic employment, and had completely lost trust in the now previous government. These stories motivated me to work harder. It motivated me to ensure that a government was elected that would focus on the economy, oil and gas investment, jobs and pipelines, a government that believed in creating opportunities and choice. I will make sure that as a member of the Governing Caucus, we remain focused on improving the lives of all Albertans, that we build an economy that works for all Albertans, and that we remain humble and stay true to the people we serve. With so many constituents tied directly or indirectly to the oil and gas industry, it is clear that the residents of Leduc Beaumont were looking for a change. They were looking for an advocate for pipelines and prosperity. They were looking for a positive vision under the United Conservatives. From my own background in policing, I have seen firsthand the struggles that many Albertans are facing with tougher economic times and higher rates of criminal activity. When I joined the Edmonton Police Service, I had an image of what the job was and what a day would be like. I went out on ride-alongs, I talked to senior members, I believed I had a grasp on what a day in the life of an officer was like, and in the end I was only partially right. We certainly fight crime, arrest bad guys, investigate criminal allegations, but the majority of the job was mediation, listening understanding where people were coming from and what had brought us together. The amount of calls involving domestic violence and family fights, it's staggering, Mr. Speaker. These calls for help come in all day, every day, so I'm proud to see a government that is acting on implementing Claire's Law. Mr. Speaker, with Claire's Law, this will provide additional protections for women in the form of information and allow those who choose to seek the information the ability to make a more informed decision, decision on their relationships. This is an additional tool that can be used to help and prevent and lower the incidences of domestic violence. The commitment to increase funding for electronic monitoring is a great step forward to help victims. Being comfortable in your own home and community should not be a luxury. This will also be a tool that will allow police to react faster to those who are breaching their release conditions. These are, there, there are so many incidences where this technology would have prevented re-victimization as so many victims of domestic violence are taunted by their abusers in an effort to further control them and ed end their bid for justice and a peaceful future. Equally important will be the Saving the Girl Next Door Act. That will provide additional protections for victims of human trafficking. Having investigated this type of crime, the stories of violence, abuse, manipulation and fear are heart-wrenching. The extent that some people will go to profit off another human being is deplorable, and that it still happens in our province and our country is tragic. I will also advocate for a more responsive court system that will end needless delays and adjournments, and a system that puts victims first and realizes the bravery of those who come to testify and face those they have accused of a crime. The commitment from the government to hire additional prosecutors will certainly help alleviate court delays and reduce the workload on prosecutors, allowing them to put more attention to their cases as they represent not only the victims, but all of society in a court of law. Another aspect of policing is the amount of time spent dealing and trying to help those with mental health conditions. The stigma of having a mental health condition can still lead many to not seek help and deteriorating mental health is a significant issue for those experiencing addiction homelessness, suicidal thoughts, or a struggle to find a place in daily society. This government has made commitments to support those with mental health conditions, including appointing an Associate Minister for Mental Health and Addictions, and has laid out a mental health and addictions strategy. Reducing the stigma and increasing the support for those suffering from mental health conditions must be a priority. All of us in this assembly will know someone with a mental health condition, and this must be a nonpartisan issue that we work on together. Mr. Speaker, as I went door to door in Leduc Beaumont, it was clear that not only was the economy a significant issue, but that crime was also a concern. And I'm proud to be a part of a governing caucus that will take these issues seriously and put forward legislation to help prevent people from becoming victims. 
a government that will put victims first and implement a rural crime strategy to help those who find themselves too often the only thing that stands between their family, their property, and a criminal. Mr. Speaker, there is no public opinion poll that performs better than being in the community and going door to door asking residents what they're concerned about. And Mr. Speaker, the economy was the number one issue in the riding of Leduc Beaumont. I heard calls for pipelines, support for the oil and gas sector, increased investment in the province, more job opportunities and a need for a government that listened to people. A government that would listen to the concerns of the constituents of Leduc Beaumont. Mr. Speaker, I believe that one of the biggest questions Albertans asked themselves when they voted was which leader, which party and which candidate and which vision could get the economy booming again. The constituents of Leduc Beaumont believed in me and the United Conservatives' positive vision and I will fight for them every day. As we move forward on legislation to reignite, reignite our economy, know that we are doing what we can to show the people of Alberta that we serve them that we will fight to restore investor confidence and that we'll be, bring back prosperity. The riding of Leduc Beaumont has a long and rich history in agriculture and oil and gas and although the riding this election has changed to one that is nearly all urban, the connection that many residents have to the farming community runs deep through personal and family ties. One only needs to stop at the a w in Leduc and you can speak to many current and former farmers, retirees and those still working hard in the community. We call them the Senators and they know exactly what is top of mind for the riding that day and conveniently they also know exactly what to do about it Mr. Speaker. I'm sure that these groups meet across the province every day. The communities in the riding are strong. Both the cities of Leduc Beaumont have small town feels to them and a deep sense of commitment to the community is amazing to see. The amount of people who volunteer, fundraise for the community and work to support one another is outstanding and it inspires me. The constituency has achieved so much and yet there is potential for so much more. Collaboration and cooperation have increased in order to achieve common goals for mutual prosperity. I really do admire that the municipalities in and outside the riding are partners, not adversaries, in attracting investment and meeting goals. One example is the airport, which I was recently able to tour, has achieved so much. The recent private sector investment alone at the airport exceeds $700 million and the EIA generates over $3 billion in economic activity every year from the movement of passengers, cargo and local economic development. With a 24-hour airport, the QE2 rail lines, Nisku and Leduc industrial parks and having a diversified and skilled workforce, the constituency, this constituency is truly a part of the economic engine of Alberta and when Leduc Beaumont is doing well, Alberta is doing well. I'll be proud to support Leduc, Beaumont, Leduc County and be their representative in the legislature to advocate for infrastructure projects, schools, investment and to support legislation that will reignite our economy. I will unapologetically defend our resource development, not only for the benefit of Leduc Beaumont but for all Albertans. In policing, I have helped many people in a variety of ways and I've never asked for thanks or acknowledgement of it. I just came in every day to work, I did my job and I helped those who asked which many, many had called about a crime and many who called because they didn't know who else to turn to. Ronald Reagan once said, there's no limit to the amount of good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. I'm not here for credit. I'm here to do a job to help the people of Alberta get to a more prosper, prosperous future by growing our economy, balancing the budget, growing job opportunities, supporting our oil and gas sector and increasing the confidence of Albertans as a whole. Canadians and those around the world to invest in our province and I'm here to serve the people of Alberta. And as I close, I'd like to thank the constituents of Leduc Beaumont for placing their trust in me, the campaign volunteers who worked so hard to make this a reality. I've always said that it may be my name on the ballot but it'll be our win and their support was amazing. And also a big thanks to my entire family for their love and support throughout this whole process. Thank you Madam Speaker.